Hey, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. We're joined by Mike Gurren from Excel is Fun. This is episode 77, top two per industry. All right, so hey, I got a question from Alex. Is there a way to show the top two customers per industry? So we have a whole bunch of industries over here in column A, and for each one, uh, lots of different customers. We want to see the top two based on sales amount. Now, I'm going to do that with a pivot table. Boy, this got a little bit harder in uh, Excel 2007, Excel 2010, insert, pivot table, OK. All right, let's bring the pivot table field list up here where you can see it. We're going to put industry down in row labels. Yep, amount in values and customer as a second field in row labels. And here's the thing that I don't like. You know, Microsoft is in love with this compact layout. They love it so much, I think they want to marry it. Uh, and that puts both of those fields in one column, which means that we have only one heading up here instead of two headings like we really need. And yes, you could open the drop down and select from there, but who's going to figure that out? Let's just do what I always do. I go to the Design tab, on the Design tab, Report Layout, go back to Tabular Form. Hey, if anyone at Microsoft is listening, there should be a way to make that be the default because I understand that was a lot of work for you. We don't like it. All right. Now that we have industry and customer, I want to filter the customers to show only the top two. So I'm going to go to the customer drop down, value filters. Oh, just right outside of the screen, it's called top 10 at the bottom. Top 10, even though it's called top 10, it doesn't have to be the top 10. I'm going to cruise down here. I'll just put in two, top two items based on sum of amount. Click OK. Bam, and there's, we now have the top two. Probably don't need grand totals here in field A. So back in options, field settings, let's say none, click OK, and now we just have the values. Oh, what's that? You'd like to have those filled in? Well, that's a lot easier in Excel 2010. Go to the design tab, report layout, repeat all item labels, and that's there. That's a beautiful thing. So I'm sorry to complain about the compact mode. They do a lot of great things for us out there at Microsoft. Uh, I don't want to sound ingrateful or ungrateful. Uh, it's easy enough to go back and choose our own tabular form. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to be so uh, <laughs> uh, sound so unappreciative of the things they do, especially in pivot tables. They keep making pivot tables better and better and better. So that's my solution uh, using pivot tables. Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Wow, pivot table. That's that is amazing. That means since we have a filter here. We could filter on customer based on these two and show the top two. Totally amazing. Pivot tables are amazing. All right, um, I'm going to do this slightly different way. I don't think it's better than that pivot table. I kind of like the pivot table. I'm going to use the filter method. Now, in order to use filter, we're actually I'm going to actually filter and sort and then add an extra column and then I'll just do a regular filter. Now. Uh, based on this extra column. First, we have to sort, and we're going to sort two times because I want all of the A's, all the industries together, and within that industry, I want the biggest to smallest. So I'm going to sort this column first, uh, data, sort, uh, a, uh, this one's Z to A, I want the biggest ones on top. You can also, in 2007, 10, go to right click sort, largest to smallest. So I did that first, then I come over here and I right click sort smallest or A to Z. So now I have all the A's together, and within the A's, we have this sorted. So it's, it's important for this trick that you do those two sorts. Now I'm going to add an extra column. I'm going to call this um, number or something. And I'm going to say some borders here. And uh, this is a formula. I like to color my uh, formulas in a table like this to indicate that this is the raw data and this is a formula. I use count if. And what am I going to count? I'm going to count this. You know why? Because I only need one, two, the two biggest. But when it comes down to B, I need a one, two. When it comes down to C, I need a one, two. So I'm going to count the range. I'm going to type a colon and then comma and get this seri very same range there. Now that's a ridiculous formula there. Until we lock this, I'm going to hit the F4 key and lock the row reference. This is an expandable range. So as we go down, the blue box will expand. Control Enter. When I double click and send it down, of course, right here, it can only count two because the range is only that big. When it's down here, 
3. But when, of course, when it comes to here, the relative cell reference here is now counting something different, and so it starts over. Now I can simply filter. I could create a table. I could go to Data and Filter. I use Control-Shift-L. Now I'm going to filter on this column, unselect everything, and just go 1, 2. And now I have the top two for each industry. So the key was we sorted, add an extra column, and then filtered based on this column, just on 1, 2. I'm going to Control Asterisk to highlight the whole table. Control C, that highlights. And you can see the dancing ants are going around just the visible cells. I'm going to insert a new sheet down here. Shift F11. And then call this uh, Data Dump, DD. I click right there and Control V. So I've extracted. Now maybe I didn't really want this column here. So I'm going to right click Delete. All right, so that's using um, sort, filter, and an extra column. Throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, Mike, that was a cool, cool method. Now, you know, the one thing when you use that county, if that was a fancy, fancy thing to do with the expanding range. Uh, but the thing that I do is I always say equal if column A of this row is equal to column A of the previous row, then I want 1 plus the previous another number. Otherwise, I want 1. And uh, just shoot that down, gives you the exact same result. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Restarting at 1 every time. Uh, makes your head hurt a little bit less because you don't have to think about that expanding range. The expanding range is definitely a very, very cool way to go. All right, so there you have it. Yeah, a couple of different ways to solve Alex's problem. I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.